Hey students, I have a spring here which is stretched by an extension E because of the weight W. So I can write the spring constant as W divided by E, which I'm going to call K. Now let me connect two of these identical springs in parallel. And let me stretch them using the same weight, W. Since there are now two tension forces supporting W, each tension force would only be W divided by 2, which means each spring will only be half as extended as before. So the extension is E over 2, which means I can write the spring constant for this composite spring as W divided by half E, which is 2K. Now let me connect two of these identical springs in series. Again, the springs are stretched by this weight W here. So how stretched is this spring going to be? It has to support the same weight W, so its extension should be E. What about this spring? It has to support the weight W and the weight of this spring. If this is a light spring with negligible mass, then the extension in this spring would also be E. Which means the total extension of this composite spring is 2E. So the spring constant of this composite spring is W divided by 2E, which is half K. So if you connect two springs, identical springs, in parallel, you effectively get a composite spring with double the spring constant. If you connect two springs, identical springs, in series, you get a composite spring which has half the spring constant is only half as stiff. You can see this in this video here. The oscillation with the springs in parallel has a much higher frequency because it's effectively a stiffer spring. The oscillation with the springs in series has a lower frequency. You have effectively a looser spring. In general, you can connect two springs with different spring constants, K1 and K2. If they are connected in parallel, they must have the same extension E. So the weight is supported by two tension forces. So W is equal to K1E, which is the tension force in spring 1, plus K2E, which is the tension force in spring 2. After rearranging the equation, W over E is of course the spring constant of the composite spring. So the spring constant of two springs connected in parallel is K1 plus K2. Now let's have two springs with different spring constants K1 and K2 connected in series. The bottom spring is supporting the weight W. Let's call the extension E2. So we can write W equals to K2 E2. What about the top spring? The top spring has to support the weight W and the weight of the bottom spring, which is light and has negligible weight. So if the extension of the top spring is E1, we know that K1 E1 is also supporting W. So we can write W is equal to K1 E1. The total extension of this composite spring is actually E1 plus E2. We can write E1 as W over K1. We can write E2 as W over K2. Rearranging the equation, we get E 
divided by W is 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2. But what is E over W? It's the reciprocal of the spring constant of the composite spring. So if you add up the reciprocals of the spring constants, you get the reciprocal of the spring constant of the composite spring. If this reminds you of resistances connected in parallel and series, you are right. But the result is kind of opposite. When you connect springs in parallel, you get a larger spring constant. When you connect springs in series, you get a smaller spring constant. Amazing! Ta-ta!